Well, good morning. And welcome to each of you to the worship of the First Congregational United Church of Christ of Naperville. It's a blessing to see each of you, and it's just a blessing to be in this space, isn't it? Um, to our guest, we want you to know that you are a special blessing to us by your presence, and we want you to know that you are welcome here today and that you're always welcome at First Congregational. There are friendship pads on each row, on each pew, and I'm going to ask that you pass them down the row and sign them, put in your name and the information, and then pass them back and perhaps learn someone's name that's sitting on your row that you did not know before worship today. This is a special day in the life and the ministry of the First Congregational Church as we welcome two new members, Cindy and Mark Service, are here. And they are already a very beautiful uh, thread in the fabric of this congregation. But today we will formally welcome them to First Congregational. If you've not signed up for any of the listening sessions, you still have time. There are a few of those sessions offered this week and I believe one next week. So if you're not signed up, please do take a moment and sign up to participate. Katie Minnick is going to come now with a very special announcement, and she'll be followed by Chris Lorimer. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is an especially good example of why I'm making this announcement today. Um, as some of you have noticed, we do not have virtual services every Sunday. This has become a very critical part of our worship service. We have a lot of members who cannot attend in person on Sundays, but we need volunteers to help us run those virtual services, as you can see. So right now we're only streaming about three of every four Sundays, and we could really use your help. So I was talking with my mom about this on the walk here, and she was like, well, I would never volunteer. I'm not techie. So that's okay. We have training for those of you who don't know how to run technology services. Don't feel like you're going to be on an island. If anything goes wrong, we're here to help. That happens. It's okay. But we really want to make sure that we keep our virtual community intact and connected to our church. So if you would like to volunteer, please let me know. Let anybody know, and we will help get you connected. Thank you. Good morning. This is just a reminder that today is the first Music with a Mission concert with that new title, uh, featuring Amanda Halgrimson, a fantastic soprano, and Valerie Lorma on piano. That's at 4 o'clock today, and we will be benefiting Lizzie's Fund, which is a group that organizes, uh, that raises money to provide um, health care and medical uh, costs and, and surgeries for our, our um, senior animals, senior dogs who are looking for a forever home. Um, so please come. It'll be a lovely concert. Uh, and I've just been assured that it will be cooler in here this afternoon. So it'll be nice. And also, it's not in your bulletin, but um, Tom Farthing is our soloist for the introit. <laughs> From the history of First Congregational Church, Jeremy Porter writes, the grain of mustard seed will become a great tree. Physical growth and material assets of an organization are easy to record. The spiritual progress and influence of a church can never be accurately measured or expressed. Now let us be here, fully present, and in silence. Oh, 
please rise, embody your spirit, and join in the call to worship. In Japan, call to worship is often just reading words from the Bible, because it is God, not people, who invites us to worship. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. Please join me in singing the opening hymn 439 found in the black hymnal located in front of you or under your pew. Please continue standing and join me in the prayer of silent confession. With gratitude and reverence we say together, we are forgiven, we are accepted, we are beloved. Thanks be to God. And now turn to your neighbors and safely greet them with a sign of the peace of Christ, such as a peace sign or elbow bump. Peace, 
I invite the children to come forward with Children's Time with Mrs. Swanson. I have here a bunch of musical instruments that make lots of noise. If you could all take one and pass it on. Make sure the people in the, the, in the back get some too. Everybody have something? No? Nope. You still need something? Okay. Okay. When I was young, the minister in my church had a wonderful singing voice. I've been told that he had to make a choice between being an opera singer and a minister. And fortunately for us, he chose to be a minister. The first Sunday in May, he always did a sermon and song. So that is why we are talking about song today in um, honor of Ernie Hunsinger, my minister, when I was growing up. So make a joyful noise. Now? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord. The birds all sing and the church bells ring. The birds seem to sing as loud as they can. And the church bells ring and I want to sing and make a joyful noise to the Lord. Tweet a tweet, ding dong ding. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord. Not yet. <laughs> a guitar starts strumming and the choir is humming and I want to hum as loud as I can. The guitar is strumming and I am humming. I make a joyful noise to the Lord. Not yet. Strum, 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 hum, 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 tweet a tweet, tweet, ding dong, ding. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord. No. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> the people clap and my foot starts to tap and I want to tap as loud as I can. The people clap and I want to tap and make a joyful noise to the Lord. No. Not yet. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord. The piano plays and we all sing praise. I sing praise as loud as I can. The piano plays and we all sing praise and make a joyful noise to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, clap, 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 tap, 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 strum, 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 hum, 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 tweet, 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 ding, dong, ding. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord. Almost. <laughs> Birds are singing, bells are ringing, the guard Guitars strumming, the choir's humming, people are clapping, feet are tapping, the piano plays, and we sing our praise. We sing about angels high above us. We sing about heaven and all the joys there. We sing about Jesus and how much he loves us. We sing about God and his wonderful care. Hallelujah, hallelujah, clap, 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 tap, 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 strum, 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 hum, 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 tweet, 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 ding, dong, ding, dong. We make a joyful noise to the Lord a joyful noise to the Lord. It's so much fun, and then we're done, and we bow our heads and quietly pray. We ask God to guide us and be there beside us and thank the Lord for this great, noisy day. And by prayer is a joyful noise to the Lord, a very joyful noise to the Lord. Amen. Almost. Dear God, may we always make a joyful noise and sing your praise. Thank you for all you have given us. Now we're going to do the hallelujah twice, and the first time 
You can play your instruments as loud as you can, make a joyful noise, and the second time, put them back in the bucket as you go off to class. Make noise. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Rooted in our own compassion, generosity, friendship, and faith, all gifts are gratefully received. Our offerings, whether through the offering plate or online, contribute toward our mission for this community and beyond, helping to spread Christ's radical message of love and justice. In a world so filled with brokenness and sorrow, it would be easy to lose ourselves in never-ending grief, to be choked by our outrage, to be paralyzed by the enormity of suffering, to feel our hearts squeeze tight with hopelessness. Instead, this morning, let us simply breathe together as we hold our hearts open. Breathing in, let our hearts fill with compassion. Breathing out, let us pray for healing in our world and in our lives. Breathing in, open ourselves to the transforming power of love. Breathing out, 
as we pray for peace in our world and in our lives, breathing in the power that through Christ we may know our strength and be filled with courage, breathing out a desire to pour our love into the world through our gifts that provide hope and healing, showing God's care near and far. Amen. This morning, as we come to this time of prayer, I will offer sentences of prayer followed by moments of silence and reflection. But before we get to that, there may be joys or concerns that you'd like to share with the community. And so today I would ask that wherever you are in the sanctuary, if you would stand and just tell us your name and share your joy or concern. One of the ushers is going to come to you with a microphone so you can be heard. Good morning. I'm Eva Genevieve. Um, I have a, my best friend in California. It was kind of a surrogate mother to me while I was living out there, and my folks were out, out here for many years. Um, she's now on hospice and, you know, coming up right to the end of her life, and I just would like you to hold her up because she's an amazing woman, Margaret Johnson. Lord, hear our prayer. I'm Marilee Andelbrandt. I just have a joy. This is Nurses Week, and I hope that you all will remember your nurses if you have had to have one. And, And I might add, Mary Lee was a nurse for 60 years at Edward Hospital. So this is a good nurse. (laughs) Lord, hear our prayer. I'm going to ask for prayers for my daughter's friend, Stacy, who has just been diagnosed with cancer on the tongue. And the surgeon is recommending removal of her tongue and her voice box. And she's a singer. She has an extensive knowledge of the American Songbook and all genres, so that's a really tough ask for her, so prayers for her, please. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, David Blood. Um, So my daughter, Macy, is uh, graduating. She's going to be an Illinois State Redbird coming in the fall. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, I'm asking for prayers for Jane Brueggemann and her father who just entered hospice. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Creator and creating God, Today we come in this season of Easter offering prayers for your church, First Congregational. May we travel with hope, 
when we are worn down with worries about our future. May we seek Christ, who is our only way. For worshiping communities who seek to renew their mission of service during this Easter, may we first seek you, O God, who reveals to us the truth and the life in every way. For people who bear the burdens of fear and penetrating shame, may those who've been abused as children find a place in Christ's compassion and mercy. May we all seek your healing for such tragedies to our children. For people with unsteady tempers who carry emotional unrest, may Christ's resurrection bring new life from within our hearts, minds, and souls. May we receive only hope in Easter. For people who starve for justice and who seek the horizon of peace, may those torn apart by war find shelter, food, and consolation on a new ground of possibilities. For people who wander and stray aimlessly, May we seek Christ who is our way, our truth, and our life, no matter our journey. For people who seek you in the midst of depression and loneliness and in uncertain times, May Christ's fidelity emerge in our prayerfulness and in our ache for healing and forgiveness. For people who are tired of the church and who question their belief in you, O God, may we learn to listen to our life questions and those who need our kind ears. May we be patient with our quests, our searching, and our path for newness and consolation. For our beloved dead who have journeyed home, may they find the way to eternal life. May they be at home with your love and kindness. We pray to the Lord the prayer that we've been taught to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
two scripture readings today. The first one is Psalm 31, verses 1 through 4 and 15, 16. Uh, to the leader, a psalm of David. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Now John 14, uh, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, Then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Let us pray. Gracious God, it is your servant's prayer that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, for you are our rock. You, O Lord, are our Redeemer, and through your Holy Spirit we anticipate with appreciation what you will say and do this day. Speak, Lord, for your servants listen. Friends, I have to admit to you that every time I stand to preach, I feel a little bit anxious. And yet the anxiety that I'm feeling this preaching morning pales in comparison with what the disciples must have been feeling with Jesus on that night. After all, the disciples did not fully realize yet it was the last night Jesus and his disciples would have ever have together as a small community, as a family, if you will. 
immediately before our text for today. We watch as Jesus wraps a towel around his waist, bends down and washes the dusty feet of his disciples, and he even washes the feet of the one he knew would deny him, Peter, as well as the one who would betray him, Judas. Now that action in and of itself might be our first clue of God's vast hospitality for all, including even deniers and betrayers. For even though in that day and time washing someone's feet was an action assigned to servants, Jesus was bound and determined to do it himself for those that he called friends. Perhaps he wanted to show them what love looks like, what love does for one another, what love gives on behalf of each other. And perhaps Jesus also wanted them to know that he was calling them, those who would be his followers, to be that kind of love, that kind of hospitality, not just for each other, not just for those who gather in a 177-year-old sanctuary on a Sunday morning. But for all of God's children, including those who never steps inside church walls. Yet even before the disciples' feet are completely dry, before the water is emptied from the basin, Jesus changes gears and spends precious time talking about hard things, betrayal, suffering, death. And you wonder if he uh, did that, if he did what many of us do whenever we talk about hard things? Did he avoid eye contact as he told his friends that one of them would betray him? A move that would certainly lead to his suffering and his death. Did his voice drop when he told Judas to go ahead and do what he needed to do? Did Jesus' stomach churn as Judas slunk off into the night and the door closed behind him? I can imagine all of those things happening with Jesus. The gospel writer John tells us that on that night Jesus was troubled in spirit and told his disciples, his family, all of those hard things to hear and to bear. There was so much ahead of him, and Jesus knew it. Jesus knew he had stirred up the political leaders with his refusal to play the games of the empire, as well as with his insistence on eating and drinking with the cast off, the left outs, the silent ones, teaching them that though they ranked low on the hierarchy of political power, that they were valued in the eyes of him. And the empire knew that that kind of teaching, that kind of empowerment can lead to a revolution. And so Jesus was a threat to the system that worked quite well for all of those who were in charge. And by that night, Jesus also must have known that he had set the religious leaders' teeth 
on edge as well as all his teachings about the kingdom of God as well as his own embodiment of God's reign demonstrated through his miracles and his healings the sick man by the pool the man born blind the friend Lazarus and many more so surely on that last night with his friends as Jesus washed their feet and as Jesus spoke of hard things, he knew beyond a shadow of doubt that by challenging the way things are, without, with, with almost everything that he did, trouble, suffering, death, was inevitable. It was to be a part of the story of God's love made flesh that would unfold. So yes, as John writes, Jesus was troubled in spirit, I am sure. But I personally think that the synoptic gospel writers, Mark, Matthew, and Luke were a bit more on target when they talked about Jesus being deeply grieved as he looked clear-eyed at all that was ahead of him. But John softens it a bit in his account with troubled language. And who knows, perhaps Jesus himself was trying to soften his own fear or unease in front of his disciples. And yet the disciples must have sensed that something was afoot. They had been with him for so long. They had seen the way that he lived out his ministry. They had watched as he came head to head with the leaders of both the state house as well as the church house time and time again. They were hearing the rumors too. And they knew the shadows were growing thicker and as all good friends do they must have felt Jesus troubled spirit his heavy grief about what was to come so don't you wonder then what they thought when Jesus said these words don't you wonder if they did an emotional double take for though these words of John 4 are familiar to those of us who have spent uh, time at a memorial service or in hospice rooms. They were brand new to these disciples on that night. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe into God. Believe also into me. Frankly, I'm, I'm surprised Peter did not speak up like usual, saying something like, what do you mean, don't let our hearts be troubled? All we have is trouble right now. But if he did it, if he said something like that, John does not tell us that. But rather, John wants us to focus on the rest of what Jesus had to say. Words about his father's house, an abundance of dwelling places, and how he himself was preparing those spaces because where he was, they and we would be also. And he sprinkled throughout these poetic promises pictures of relationship and of generosity and vast hospitality and promised presence. Now I know those of us who have grown up in the church have heard and have probably, I've probably have preached that these promises from Jesus are about what is to come, about life after death, about this spatial kind of heavenly home. And that might indeed be what Jesus intended and yet, as we inhabit these words today, I wonder if there is more to it than only a promise of the sweet by and by. According to Rolf Jacobson at Luther Seminary in the Hebrew scriptures or what we call the Old Testament, the term Father's House, 
is much more than a place in space and a time to lay down one's head at night, a shelter for the body. But rather, the Father's house is more about one's kinship group, those from whom you get your identity. The Father's house is where you find those who care for you and for whom you are expected to care for. In Jesus' day, the phrase Father's house was not as much about a space as it was about an identity, a homecoming of sorts. I told y'all that my dad was from East Texas and that I lived in Dallas for about 10 years. And so we would say in the South, your father's house tells you who your people are. It is where you find your full home. And I don't know how you hear that, but I find that insight breathtaking. For with that in mind, we hear Jesus saying, look, because of who I am and because of all I am about to do, I'm here to tell you that you have a dwelling place in my father's house. Because of who I am and all that I am about to do, Jesus is saying, you have a new kinship group, a new identity. Because of who I am and all that I am about to do, Jesus promises you have this whole new home, one that is in God, God's very self. A home where you are sought and received. A home where you are valued and welcomed fully no matter what. Because of my father's house, in God's house, Jesus says, there are many dwelling places, an abundance of dwelling places, far exceeding your imagination and expectation. If it were not so, I would have told you. And so I go and I prepare a place for you. And y'all are invited to come with me and through me and in me and find your people find your home right here and right now for where i am there you may be also now unless we forget jesus was saying this he was promising this new relationship this new identity this god's household to the people the very people who were about to betray him, to deny him, and to forsake him. He was promising this new way of being in the world to those who would soon cower in fear behind locked doors because they would be unable to remember what he had promised about the end of his story life. And let's be real. Jesus was not gullible. Just as he was clear-eyed about his future, he was surely clear-eyed about his disciples too. He was surely or is surely clear-eyed about you and about me. And yet, still, in the gospel's great nevertheless, he tells us that in his father's house, in God's household, because of who he is and what he absorbed as God's very self, there are many dwelling places. And that all, even betrayers and deniers, those who feel lost as well as those who feel found, all are invited to find their home, to find their people, to see whose they are, to know and to abide in their God each and every day, no matter what. And that promise my dear friends, is nothing but pure grace. 
That promise is nothing but extravagant grace. That promise is nothing but breathtaking grace. You have not earned it. We don't deserve it. We cannot buy it. It is a pure gift. And it is also our lived reality. Right here. Right now, because of who Jesus our Christ is, as God's love made flesh, we are abiding. We are at home, not just in this wonderful 177-year-old sanctuary, but in God. By coming to Jesus, God made a decision to take in first hand everything about what it means to be human even brokenness and suffering and death so that we would trust that nothing we do or experience is outside of God's sacred presence so we would see so that we would know and feel that no matter what, we are at home in God's household right here and right now. And furthermore, we've been given a new people, each other, a new family for whom that we can care for and a new family who can care for us. And yet that identity is not just the people in this vast space. I was going to say in those worshiping live stream, but there's no one. We are to see our people as all people. For in our Father's house, in God's household, are many dwelling places, lest we think that we can decide who makes the cut. God's household is way too big for that. And it is not our job. So here's what I wonder. I wonder as we move to God's next, as you as first congregational people, as you move to God's next for you, as I, as a preacher, move to God's next for me. Who needs to hear this? I, I wonder to whom are you and I being summoned to share this good news of God's hospitality for all the people? Who would be set free by knowing that no matter what, that they are at home in God, even when, and especially when, the shadows have grown thick and trouble is all they know? Is it one of the children who we just saw participating in children's time? who need to be reminded in whose beautiful image they were made? Is it the young and very busy looking professionals I've seen walking around downtown Naperville who speak or may not? Is it the guests who gather in the Clark Room with you can? Or is it you? On more days than not, are you able to trust that because of what Jesus has said, that we see in Jesus God's love made flesh for you too? And that you already inhabit one of God's dwelling places, you already have a place in God's family, in God's household. You who have it all together on the outside but still sometimes feel like you're playing dress up on the inside. 
You who really just want to live a faithful life, but who feel that oftentimes life has you pulled in so many different directions. You who feel that things are going well in your world like you are doing what God hopes that you will do. You who can no longer lift your head because your hope has drained out and faith feels like an old dream. Do any of you need to be reminded today that you too are already at home, already loved, already fully claimed, already known? That because of what we see in Jesus, our brother and savior, you already have, already inhabit one of God's abundant dwelling place in God's very self. Who are those who need to know their identity as a beloved child of God? And how can we tell that good news in a compelling way? Because it must be heard. The world is hungry for it. We are hungry for it. So I've said, as I've said to all the congregations that I've previously served, people of God, welcome home. For that is the promise that Jesus offers us. And that is the piece about what I love most about this faith community called First Congregational United Church of Christ of Naperville. Trusting the promise for ourselves and then spreading that welcome and that homecoming out from beyond this space. To all the people in this busy, beautiful, hard-edged, no-nonsense, sometimes wonderful, but sometimes scary city. That they might find their kinship here too. That they might find their home here too. or rather like Cindy and Mark Surface, who realize and know that they are already home, already in the one whose household has many, many, many dwelling places. to ask Mark and Cindy to come forward and maybe kind of just stand here yes like that get your bulletins in hand so that you'll be able to follow the leader <laughs> You have, dis dis you have expressed a desire to share in the ministry of Christ Church through this community of faith. By your baptism, you have already made, or already made one with the universal church body of Christ, the church. Today, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and to this place. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home. And we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Do you, do you affirm today your promise to live by the grace of our creator God? 
known in the compassionate love of Jesus, so that empowered by the Holy Spirit, you may join the way of Christ to resist oppression and evil and to show love and ju justice and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able. You answer. I promise. I promise. I promise. With the it is your intention, according to the grace given you, to know or to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the one universal Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission of love and justice and sharing regularly in the worship and work of God through this local congregation as we seek together to serve God in this community and in the world. It is with the help of God. I'm going to ask that we would read together now, all of us, the United Church of Christ statement of faith in the form of a doxology. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through the prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You will bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism, and to eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. Promise all, trust you, forgiveness of sin and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle, justice and peace, your presence and trial rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm is no win. Blessing and honor and power into you. Amen. Now let us look at Mark as well as Cindy and welcome them. We welcome you with joy into the common life of the church. We promise our friendships and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, May we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love to be witnesses in living Christ as we seek together to be God's people in love and service. Amen. And so we have certificates for both Cindy and Mark. I will read. Of course, the statement of faith is included uh, inside the certificate in case you want to continue to go over it. The certificate reads, Certificate of Church Membership. This is to certify that Cynthia and Mark Service have been received into full membership of the First Congregational United Church of Christ of Naperville at 25 East Benton Avenue, Naperville, Illinois, on the seventh day of May in the year 2023. Signed by Benjamin L. Reynolds, interim pastor. Congratulations, Cindy. Welcome. Congratulations, Mark. Welcome. Can we turn to your seat? It's an exciting time in the life of the church when new members come. It's 
It's also an exciting time in the life of the church when we are able to share a common meal. When we remember in the best way that we can all that Christ means to us. Let us pray. Today, God, as we gather around this table, we remember that it is not our table, but yours. And we thank you for what you did for us in order to make this meal possible. Thank you for every individual in this space and for the families that are represented. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Scriptures teach us that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took bread He blessed it, break it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And on that night, he turned likewise to the cup and said, This cup is the New Testament represents a new covenant that I am making with you. Take it and drink all of it. Once you receive the bread, go ahead and eat it. As you receive the cup, I'm going to ask that you would hold it and we're going to drink it together.
cup in hand. This is the cup of promise. Let us drink together. Join in the unison prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Watching over me, my Lord. Go to keep angels watching over me.